Hello, everyone. My name is Elissa Johnson. I am in the Natural Resource Science Department, and I am fortunate enough to study monarch butterflies here in North Dakota rangelands. I'd like to open with a brief metaphor. Let's say you're baking a cake for your sister's birthday. The only recipe you have is your great grandmother's butter pecan cake passed down from generation to generation. However, your sister has a tree nut allergy. You need to take the basics from the recipe and modify it to accommodate her. You gather your ingredients and look for pecan substitutes. To make sure it's still a cake that everyone enjoys, you try a few different options to be safe. Forgo pecans altogether, pretzels, and roasted pumpkin seeds. You mix the batter together, put them in the oven, and wait to see the results. Now, this is not unlike my research, and no, I promise we do not bake monarchs into cakes. Much like a cake requires certain ingredients like flour and sugar, so too does monarch conservation, except we require monarch butterflies and the elements within their system on which they depend, like milkweed for their larvae and nectar-rich flowers for the adults. You had to adapt when the only recipe you had included something your sister can't eat. For my work, this is also similar to overcoming obstacles posed by climate change and land use change. Milkweed and flowers once flourished in Midwestern prairies. These are great places for biodiversity, or at least they were. You see post-European settlement came disruption to many natural processes via fire suppression and replacement of bison with non-native cattle. This loss of dis disturbance accompanied with agricultural spread led to a decrease in uh, milkweed and flowering forbs in some areas by as much as 90%. To encourage these food resources for monarchs once again, we set out to reintroduce disturbance to our working landscapes. In other words, we wanna support monarch conservation while still sufficing human needs in the face of climate change. Like the food allergy example, we have to try our best to adapt to still get the end product we desire, a tasty cake and a healthy monarch population. We use three management options to test whether which one would produce the highest milkweed, monarch, and flower abundances. The no pecan cake is a season-long grazing approach. This is our business as usual treatment and follows the traditional recipe as closely as possible. The pretzels approach is a modified rotational grazing system that utilizes varying slices, no pun intended, of varying grazing utilization. Lastly, the roasted pumpkin seeds is a patch burn grazing system which uses fire and grazing combined. Given the extreme drought conditions we found this last summer, we found that adding pretzels or a modified twice over rest rotational grazing system resulted in the highest amounts of milkweed, monarchs, and flowers. With impending climate change likely increasing the frequency and severity of such drought events, it might be wise for landowners to include areas that are rested or in any way disturbed for act as refuge for monarchs and other endangered species. And maybe it's time we update the family recipe as well. Thank you.